So welcome everyone to this uh, webinar uh, and uh, today's topic is uh, role of managers in developing technical agility. So before I dive in, uh, I was just requesting you to type in your role uh, so that I know what kind of people we have today and I can accordingly um, accelerate or you know, slow down and orient my content. So I see that okay, we have program manager, manager, scrum master, digital transformation lead yeah so i'll uh, give a few more seconds i'll stop sharing for a while so that we can read this properly okay pm in mechanical domain okay that's interesting yeah okay awesome so we have a, a few scrum masters uh one cspo i'm assuming you're a product owner cspo is is a certification but i'm assuming you're either a product manager or a product owner and most of you are managers a few coaches and the transformation lead awesome this is this is good so now i know uh, you know what kind of audience we have so one more uh, question uh, again uh, to start with so you know, the topic of, uh, of today's uh, session is role of managers in developing technical agility. So if you are to take away one most important takeaway at the end of this webinar, what would that be? What are you interested about this topic? If you can, uh, you know, uh, spend uh, a few seconds thinking and type. I'll wait for a few more seconds to understand. Yes, curiosity is the best uh, thing to have. Thank you. In IT domain role, probably you're talking about the manager's role in the IT domain. Yeah. How manager being in role can contribute to agility. Yes. Being in their regular <clears throat> management role with all the management responsibilities, how can you contribute to agility? And more specifically, we're talking about technical agility today. Yeah. Understand the perspective of various players towards bringing agility. Yeah want to know about this yeah awesome so i think yeah uh, one thing i'm really glad is um, you're talking about agility i think uh, usually many people get into this trap of you know confusing uh, with ag agile method and agility they both are slightly different and today we are speaking about technical agility we are going to explore what that is so thank you for this input so let me share my screen again and uh, we'll uh, go back to the first slide yeah so uh, a bit of background i think manju already introduced uh, as you can see here i've been an entrepreneur uh, from past uh, 11 years and um, running my as we speak i'm running my current a second company called agility moments i'm leading that uh, in the space of leadership coaching and uh, previously, I've co-founded Aritha Consulting, and I've been uh, leading the uh, the consulting, technology consulting BU and Agile Consulting BU over there. And um, and one thing I, I really want to highlight is uh, my agility journey started uh, around 2002, towards the end of 2002, when maybe I think it's the same year uh, when uh, I think Agile Manifesto was formed, or maybe a year before, I think 2001. So I call this as agile ways of working. And now actually I want to call this as agile ways of living because it has occupied every part of my life, uh, whatever I do, uh, whether it's my entrepreneurship, working with my kids, working with my friends, uh, the community members, working with my clients. Uh, it's all about agile ways of living. And uh, I, I source most of my experience with, uh, with that pract practical experience of uh, living the agile ways of working uh, from uh, 2002. That's a bit about me. Um, now, today's topic, we are going to uh, dive into three sections. One, the context setting. We will establish a common understanding or a shared understanding about what we mean by technical agility and another term called technological savvy. And they both are really important and they're related. And with that foundation, we will dive into role of managers in developing technical agility, both for yourself as well as uh, for the teams that you manage. And, uh, and towards the end, we will have some Q&A. And before we go into Q&A, we will also look at some myths and enablers. We'll try to bust them uh, with some practical tips. Okay, that's a, that's a brief uh, topic summary. 
and let's jump in into context setting so let me ask you this question so first of all why agility let's start from there anyone wants to share why do we need agility in today's world changes are happening at very fast pace mm -hmm. around us Mm. And whatever we plan, uh, we cannot actually go ahead with that plan mm -hmm. for a longer time. Right. Okay. So it, it's it, it's in all aspects. It might be a project, might be life, might be might be anything around you. That way. Right. I think that the key point, uh, if I understand, is the the pace of change has changed, and it's almost become exponential, and we got to catch up with that, and we need agility at every aspects whether it's team level, whether it's application level, whether it's organization or business level. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, so the world of disruptive technologies, yeah, we will lose competitive edge, yes. For some companies, it's survival. For some companies, it's thriving, um, being in that competition. And for sensible organizations, it's a delicate balance between living in today's world versus thinking about thriving in the future how do you do that we need agility yeah thank you i think that's that's good input so we'll uh, move forward here so it's a almost similar thing pace of change what you just called out and in addition to that there's a lot of revolution in technology and automation space and that is like driving the world today and Think about you know IoT and, and other things which are going to be even more disruptive. The virtual reality, artificial intelligence, machine learning, etc., which is going to be the future. And in uh, in addition to that, the globalization phenomena. So nowadays, you know, you can set up your um, enterprise sitting wherever, and you can expand it wherever you want. You have collaborators, you have the technology needed, and you have. Uh, uh, people who'd like to support you across the world and with globalization comes a lot of complexity in terms of you know, cultural differences, regulation, compliance and so on and your solution needs to work across the globe for all kinds of users. So all these are driving us crazy and uh, we need agility for sure okay, to, to address this at every level like you called out. So uh, that's the summary, increased complexity and uncertainties along with rapid and exponential changes. The combination of this is driving uh, the world crazy and there is no other way other than having agility in whatever we do. So now, uh, if you reflect on this term agility, like agile, it's almost abused uh, by introducing many jargons. And now you would have heard about business agility and today we are talking about technical agility and so on. What other agilities have you heard about? Can you just type it in the chat just so that we know what kind of world we are living within agility space? What XYZ agility have you heard of? Of them as examples, business agility, technical agility, what else have you heard about? Personal agility, yeah, that's quite famous too. Yeah. Operational agility, strategic agility, and so on, right? There are quite a few, actually. Leadership agility is another one. Business agility, yes. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. I think you're on top of it. Yes. Great. So now, uh, so we are focusing today on technical agility. What is technical agility? Why and, and how do we develop technical agility? And what's the role of managers? That's the focus today. So if you look at this diagram, what thoughts come to your mind? If I were to ask you, define technical agility based on what you see here. Can you guys make an attempt? There is something plus something and another plus something. There are three things. How do you define technical agility? Feel free to speak, okay? You don't have to only provide in the chat. Yes, implementing agility here, taking help of the technology. Okay. Implementing agility here, and what is or, that? Or be, 
be, being agile um, and mm. using the technology in it. Okay, using technology and technology based yeah. practices, for example. Okay, right. Yeah. Yes. That's a very good perspective. Yeah, thank you. Any other perspectives? Yeah, technical agility is like adopting to new technical, uh, basically mm -hmm. uh, changes, changes mm -hmm. uh, in terms of maybe requirements, mm -hmm. uh, te technologies uh, during the, maybe during the product uh, mm -hmm. design, mm -hmm. so adapting, adapting to changes in technical requirements. Right, okay. Yeah, being adaptive uh, to the technology needs or whatever business needs by leveraging some modern technology and so on. Okay, get you. Have an idea, explore options to implement that idea in all possible ways. Choose the best feasible one and innovate. This is what Gomati says. Yeah, yeah, this is very much about agility and technical agility has to support this, yeah. So Mayuresh says it's creating an environment that enables accelerating the delivery to customers. Yeah, that's a good one. Because you know, if you talk about agile ways of working and, and in particular using agile based methods or practices like Scrum, you know, uh, Kanban, whatever uh, you choose, your Scrum and everything will only be theoretical if you don't have right technical practices and the technical agility which could help us accelerate the delivery to customers uh, in response to the changes. Um, otherwise, we'll be, we'll be only bringing some process agility, which might be useful to some extent, but it may not give us some real desired business outcomes. Yeah, that's a very good uh, recognition. So DevOps implementation, yes, Vijay says DevOps, yeah. So that's one way of achieving technical agility. I wouldn't say that is the only way, yeah. Okay, awesome. I think you seem to have some really nice ideas here. Uh, T-shaped skills, Chitra says T-shaped skills. Yes, that is related to technical agility. We'll talk about it. Okay, I think the ideas are flowing now. Yes, that is also one way you are correct. Yeah, thank you, Vijay, for acknowledging that. Okay, awesome. So now let's let's make a... Okay, before I sh uh, reveal my definition here, which I, which I attempted, um, one thing I want to remind everyone, I think uh, two days back, I had a, I had a comment uh, in, uh, posted in LinkedIn for one of the posts where the person was speaking or debating about, or I think generated a debate about what is agile. You know, some people say it's mindset. Some people say it's uh, product design and technical practices and so on. And there is a constant debate in the industry, whether it's mindset or this. And my perspective there was agile is both a mindset and a mechanism. A mindset to acknowledge that we don't know everything, acknowledge with our client, with our stakeholders, that we don't know everything about what you need. Humbly acknowledging that, that requires a different mindset. And we need a mechanism to respond to any changes with least transactional cost. Meaning uh, we should be able to respond fast without incurring too much of cost. That is where technical agility becomes crucial. It's a combination. Having one without the other is of no use because many people you know, forget that the goal is not to become agile. Mm -hmm. Agility is also not the goal. Agility, the goal is to produce better business outcomes. And agility and agile ways happens to be vehicle. And if you take that perspective, then having a very good mindset to collaborate, to work together without right technical agility and the related practices will be of no use to produce desired business outcomes. On the other hand, having everything awesome in technology space, DevOps, continuous integration, TDD, T-shaped skills. In fact, today we speak about full stack engineer, having all of these things, but not ready to work as a team, not ready to collaborate, not having that cultural shift in the mindset is also of no use. So they both are really important. So technical agility plays a crucial role from that context, from the agile, uh, understanding of agile. Now let me introduce uh, another definition that I attempted to make. Uh, it's called the awareness, capacity, and ability of a professional, a leader, a team, or an organization. I think like, I think Vijay's in the beginning called out that, 
It can be agility, can be at any level. And I'm talking about the awareness, capacity, and ability of a professional or a leader or a team or an organization or a combination of them to discover and deliver value faster. Okay, I think I missed to write the faster on the other day. I noticed that after I finished my chart. So that faster is the key. Delivering value. Before we deliver, we also need to discover. And we need agility in both discovering and delivering. So the awareness, capacity, and ability of an engineer, let's say in a professional, is also related to technical agility. We need this for leaders and managers. So I'm putting both managers and leaders into the same category. And it is needed at the team level and the organization level. That's the technical agility. So you see here, I'm delinking technical agility with a technical practice, right? So for example, if you ask uh, a doctor, mm -hmm. okay, uh, what are some technical things that you do that you make use of in your profession? There are many things that doctors make use of it so that they can be agile. You can ask a teacher, they would also have technical agility to let's say uh, teach something in this pandemic time, right? Being abreast or uh, updated with uh, the Microsoft Teams and how do you teach something remotely using online technologies because you still want to deliver value to your students. So technical agility is that awareness, capacity, and ability of any professional and more so for engineers and all other key leaders at different levels. Mm -hmm. Uh, to discover and deliver value. And technical practices go a long way in bringing the technical agility. Okay, that's how I'm, I'm relating to it. And don't forget, this is even more important when you're working under uncertainty and risk in a transformation context. So that's the full definition. Awareness, capacity, and ability of a professional leader or a team or an organization to discover, deliver value amid uncertainty and risk in a transformation context. So do you agree with this? What are some of your thoughts on this? Let's hear. Any thoughts, comments on, on this? Or it could be a question as well. Feel free to ask. So if you map anything now under continuous integration, DevOps, either it will be helping us to deliver or discover. So there are a lot of product discovery practices. Even they also are related to technical agility. Devras, do you have business agility in the coming slides? No. Today's focus no. is only on uh, technical agility. Okay. Maybe are you covering anything how it is different from business, business agility? Yes. Business agility is an organization level agility which requires every function in the organization to be agile or to have the agility. So be it your sales, marketing, IT, HR, l &D. If all the functions in a business can demonstrate agility, then you have business agility at the organization level. Now to augment this in this context, obviously we are talking about a transformation context when you speak about business agility. If there are some practices, if there, are, if there is some awareness and capacity and ability, which could help us discover and deliver value faster. I think the keyword faster is missing here. That's technical agility, which, which makes business agility a reality. Does it make sense? Do you see the relation? Yes. Yeah. But delivering value is also including technical agility plus business agility. Am I correct? Overall yes. agility, correct? It is not That's just right. only technical agility. That's right. That's why I'm not calling technical agility as uh, delivering value. I'm talking about our ability to discover and deliver value faster when there is okay. uncertainty. That's technical agility. Okay. Yeah. So technical agility is helping the business agility to yes. achieve the end-to-end -end result. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So JP, I just wanted to uh, uh, you know understand a bit on the word use of uh, word discover here. So discover in specific terms, whether it's, uh, you know, productization, understanding customer needs, uh, you know, um, so let's say a product organization or a product owner's role, 
hmm. in order to define and making sure that you know uh, uh, entire organization team or a specific group who is working to deliver value is aligned and then um, that gets adopted into various practices and that gets translated into uh, a value is that uh, the understanding or we are talking about only pure uh, discovery in terms of what is required to expedite the delivery uh, which is essentially we are calling a technical agility no so i think you're right so discovery could be anything around even what the user needs are for example a product owner would want to discover what are the needs and pains of your customer right now when you want to do that you have some traditional ways which are known for many years but today we are living in a very volatile world for example your customer may not give you a face time beyond 5 to 10 minutes so how do you do an effective customer interview using some technical tools okay so that you can do an effective discovery of the needs so that is the ability of a product owner so here you can replace leader with a product owner because leadership role so the awareness how much a product owner is aware about what are the modern uh, let's say prioritization techniques what are the modern techniques which are used for customer journey mapping right or how can i do an effective customer interview online what's an effective tool what are some latest trends that's happening right so being aware about that not just aware having an capacity that means having some skills of using that and ability to put that into practice when there is a need it's a summation of that then you have the technical agility to perform your role well as a product owner so it applies to a scrum master it applies to an engineer it applies to a sales person now you see that whatever aspects of business agility we are talking about if you were to discover the needs and deliver value faster under uncertainty and risk you need technical agility are you seeing the point mayuresh yes absolutely got the thing yeah thank you okay so, so let's yeah, yeah sorry i have just one more point uh, so when you put it faster i feel this is the more uh, relative term yeah because you can just say that okay my team is delivering faster than the other team but for mm -hmm. me firstly if i would suggest something i would uh, rather put it in a short loops of delivery rather than faster yeah so faster is not about the productivity or compared to some other team faster is about your market needs if your market needs you to deliver faster and that faster can vary from one domain to another one product to another uh, one customer to another but you know today we are essentially i think in the beginning we spoke about the context the change is changed it's changing exponentially so a lot of customers want something delivered faster it may not be the full thing it could be incremental value so that they can get a taste of it they can build a trust on you so whatever is those delivery need do we have the capacity and the ability to do that right so the faster the speed is in the context of market needs not from a competition of of your fellow teams does it make sense yes yes yeah okay so let's dive in a little further and we'll see so um, now i'm setting a context on other term called technological savvy under the context of technical agility so to enable technical agility everyone especially leaders and managers need to develop something called technological savvy it doesn't happen automatically so then that brings the question about what is technological savvy and why and how is it related to technical agility so can anyone make an attempt to answer these two questions let's start with the first one what do you mean by technological savvy what do you think okay jp i will start with one example okay uh, mm -hmm. one of the singapore uh, singapore based bank what they did is uh, they encouraged all the employees to uh, learn aws amazon mm -hmm. cloud okay what they did is uh, they made it very interesting way meaning mm -hmm. people can come with teams and uh, there is awards also like uh, uh, like the person who complete all the 10 certificate in a year mm -hmm. he can able to travel uh, to us or attend uh, uh, the the particular seminar related to aws or there is another option so mm -hmm. and uh, people can uh, when they do more certification as a team they will encourage mm -hmm. 
So mm. basically, they are building technical knowledge of Amazon Cloud, which mm. they have in their uh, uh, roadmap to use Amazon Cloud as for all the projects. Yeah. 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 So that's one of the example I can say for technical savvy. Basically, yep. uh, it's not only just the developers or the cross-functional team mm. uh, uh, getting the knowledge. It's everybody's yep. uh, thing. Even AWS itself, first level certification is for yep. managers. So yep. there are deep uh, uh, available for certain area people. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I think that's a great example. So technological savvy means you know being updated on the latest happenings in the technology space because technology is going to help us. Every company today stands to benefit from being technologically savvy uh, at an organization level, as a, at a leader level, manager level, engineer level. In fact, uh, you would have heard and seen that industrial 4.0 and digitalization is driving every manufacturing company to be a technology-based company, software-based company, right? No longer the only traditional manufacturing company. So that's the drive that's happening. And then there's only, it's only going to increase and increase with the advent of IoT and other stuff. Why? Because if you do not know how to leverage the modern technological uh, uh, you know, uh, advances that's happening, then you will lose out your competition, right? You will lose that edge of you know, uh, doing something uh, uh, very impactfully and innovatively. So uh, the technological savvy is about your, your uh, habit of keeping yourself updated on the latest things that's happening in the context of your business, in the context of your role. And like you really called out, is not just for engineers or you know, technical managers. It's for every manager. Talk about HR manager. Today, we are talking about uh, when we adopt agile ways of working, you would have also seen that there are some changes in the way we set goals and appraisals for people, right? It cannot be traditional annual goal setting, which is not going to work. We need more frequent goal setting, more frequent opportunities to, let's say, uh, change the goal if needed along the way, and also seek 360 kind of a feedback throughout the year rather than waiting for the year. So as an HR manager, how do I know what tools allow me to do this? Are there any tools uh, which are useful for me to bring in this new way of goal setting and appraisal, right? That's technologically, being technologically savvy for the HR manager, right? And if you do have, because of the savviness, if you explore and if you develop your capacity and ability to use it, then you can bring technical agility in the way you do HR operations from the performance management standpoint. So you see, it applies to every role, every role, needs to have the technological savvy, every leader and manager. Yeah, so I see some point here. Yeah, so Vijay talks about OKRs. Uh, so OKR, again, it's more of a concept, but if you are talking about a tool that enables a quick OKR rolling out across the organization, then such leader is technologically savvy. And with that OKR, which is based on an effective tool, you have a technical agility at the organization level and at the leadership level. So OKR is a concept, but if you know an effective tool which will help you roll out OKRs, so for example, I just spoke about uh, the HR example. There is a tool called 15.5. Okay, I can just type it here for your just reference. 15.5.com, I guess. This is a tool which uh, lets uh, do the goal setting and appraisal using the OKR concept in a very effective manner. Now, how many of the HR people or leadership people know this kind of tool? First is awareness. How many of them have the capacity and ability to take it and roll it out in the organization? And if they, if they don't have that ability, that means that organization's agility sucks. It's going to be slow and you can't be agile. Only your IT or maybe development might be agile, but your customers are still waiting, right? Because, you know, you don't have the orientation for the people. They don't work on the most important stuff, etc. Yeah. Yes. So many, yeah, many organizations in develop internal. Yes. Whether it's internal, external, whatever is the case, but are we leveraging the technical agility? Uh, and to do that, we need technological savvy. Okay. So let me, let me showcase uh, a few more um, aspects about this. Let me... 
So what is technological savvy? This, by the way, comes from Marshall Goldsmith um, uh, had made a survey and is uh, based on his team and his research uh, by interviewing 30,000 plus leaders across the globe, across cultures. They have shortlisted 15 modern leadership competencies which are needed for every leader and a manager, right? So one of them is developing technological savvy. So it means, as per Marshall Goldsmith, understanding how the application of technology will increase people productivity and business effectiveness to succeed in tomorrow's world, okay? And if you have technological savvy, then you as a manager leader strive to acquire the technological knowledge needed to succeed in tomorrow's world. And that technological knowledge is specific to your role and context. And HR might have different stuff. A product owner might have different stuff. A scrum master need to know how to do an effective release planning across four countries in remote, right? How do we roll out breakout room facility in a remote meeting when you're doing a release planning? Many people are not updated about this. That's what I'm calling technical agility for a scrum master or agile coach, right? So many people, you know, often, you know, make it very narrow. Technical agility means engineers able to do TDD. So that's just one portion of your organization. You all understand that agility has to be end-to-end. -end. And end-to-end -end mm -hmm. means everyone also has to have technical agility. So that's the meaning. And uh, let's do a quick poll. Okay, so for doing this, I would request you to go to menti.com, visit menti.com and enter the number 512-52447 and answer the question that you're seeing on the screen. The question is, how is technological savvy related to technical agility based on what you just heard? Please answer this. Technological savvy is a skill, TA is action. Okay. Yes. I think most of you uh, got it, right? So it's definitely not the first and last. The both are yes. unrelated is totally wrong. Yes. TS is for leaders and TA for architect also ruled out. So yeah. only these two are, uh, yeah, now we need to find. <laughs> sure. And you already have the majority here uh, hinging around this. It's some, um, so technological savvy is a mindset. That means you need to have that willingness to learn what's happening. If you have the willingness, you will go and explore, you will learn a few things. And then if you build the capacity and ability to apply, then you have technical agility. So that needs to be developed. It doesn't happen automatically. And the necessity for that is having the right mindset to be abraded. So that means gone are the days where if you are a manager or leader and you think that, oh, I don't have to be technical. I have to be a good people manager. No, you will not be relevant anymore in the industry. Today's leader, leaders, even Marshall Goldsmith survey says that out of 15 competencies, one of them is being uh, having the developing the technological savvy. Not only for yourself, you should do that for your your teams and your uh, your people that you manage. Yeah. Okay. So I'll pause here for this uh, poll. Maybe JB, why uh, TS is your skill? TA is action is wrong. Uh, so. TS is not a skill. TS is a mindset. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to emphasize more on them. So technological savvy is like a savviness. Having savviness on something is a mindset. Like, you know, we spoke about agile mindset. Now, when you have agile mechanism, then we have practices like TDD, continuous integration, pair programming. That's a mechanism to do things faster. That's where the technical agility comes. So okay, that's nice. that's why I wanted to, you know. Yeah, even I selected as a mindset, but I just want to understand uh, why yeah. it is not. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, sure. You're welcome. Okay, so let's proceed now. Uh, like I mentioned, these are the 15 global competencies, uh, leadership competencies. And if you see here, he has categorized them as emerging large gap and timeliness. And if you look at developing technological savvy, it's an emergent competency which is needed for assuring success, success for today's leaders. That means this was not, and all of this have been categorized into emergent or emerging large gap and timeliness. You can find details more in Marshall Goldsmith website. But emerging means this was something not so important maybe 20 years back. In the last 20 or 30 years, 
developing technological savvy has become ultra relevant and ultra important for assuring client success for leaders. That's why it's very much relevant and very, very important. Okay. So developing technological savvy, that means the mindset, and through that developing technical agility is really important. It's needed for today's leaders. And it's one of the emergent uh, competency in addition to a few other, which says E here, like right? building partnership, sharing leadership. I'm sure you will be able to relate this, thinking globally, appreciating diversity. All of you would have, you would have seen this, but many managers miss this. Okay, the importance of this. That's why I wanted to highlight. So, and, and like you called out, it is very much essential for maintaining a competitive advantage, both at the organization level, even at the manager level and leadership level. Otherwise you'll no longer be relevant in the industry, in the organization. Okay, so now let's jump into role of managers in developing um, technological, uh, technical agility. And we'll start with how do we develop technological savvy? Okay, now in the interest of time, I'm going to dive into it without asking a question now in the beginning. <clears throat> uh, maybe I think I need to ask you some question because I'm a big fan of understanding how you are thinking because I'm not teaching you anything new. I'm just helping you connect the dots. So what thoughts come to your mind when you look at this picture, developing technological savvy? You can chat or speak. Yeah, elephant, uh, the, the, uh, the chess board. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I can see. Yeah. Yeah. Chess board. Yeah. Yes, there is a chess board. Next to chess board, there is an organization. So, what does this mean? Okay. Uh, it may be a hierarchical organization or a traditional uh, command and control organization. Is that correct? <laughs> that's a good guess. Awesome. What about left hand side? Left hand side looks like innovative, uh, yeah. where people can collaborate. Yeah. So more agility, I can see. Yeah. Yes, Mayura says tools and technologies, the cloud, the IoT, the coding, and such engineering practices. Yeah, that's good. I think you are making a very good attempt, all of you. Awesome. So let me show one more thing here. Now, what thoughts come to your mind? Developing technological savvy means. And you can relate back to my initial definition of technical agility. Okay, I think learning mindset, correct? So that means uh, the organization, everybody, every staff, need hmm. to be in the mindset of learning uh, mindset learning of learning. Is about yes learning, learning. and unlearning and if, learning also to some extent if i if i want to put it in a single word probably a learning organization in different uh, you know different parameters or segments yes uh, yes learning yes the learning mindset learning culture learning organization you are absolutely right and learning two two of the broad aspects one to make your organization your team your engineer very efficient so that they can you know do their work faster and deliver value faster with short feedback loops i think uh, someone mentioned a lot of short feedback loops so that you learn and then deliver value probably incremental value and eventually the full value that's about efficient being efficient and relates to speed ability to deliver faster at the same time if you want to really achieve the business agility at an organization level, we need technical agility and the technical savviness, the learning mindset about the discovery. Many, many organizations miss this. They don't adopt right technological practices. They don't invest in educating their product owners, equipping their product owners and the product management and the architects in doing a market research, technical research, which is needed for future so that your business can grow effectively and that's adaptation so adapting at speed you know can only make you a differentiator right innovating at speed can only make you a different organization with a differentiation so we need the technological savvy that learning mindset on both the sides to discover and deliver keep keep that in mind 
This is when you appreciate the need for equipping and investing people to grow on all aspects of the agility, not just for the engineers, not just conducting a TDD training for the engineers and you say we have technical agility. No, you will not have enough technical agility to produce that business agility, what someone talked about. So developing awareness on emerging technologies, which is the left-hand side, and awareness on evolving business strategies and operating models, even this is technical agility. So take a look at the examples in the banking domain. So today uh, we have, uh, you know, Paytm and uh, Wallet and, you know, I, I, I don't even remember how many names are there. They are all in the same space. The ultimate purpose is to enable a person to pay digitally. But how are they coexisting together? Has anyone thought about it? We have Paytm, we have Google Pay, we have so many vendors and players in that banking digital payment domain. How are all of them thriving and growing together? Any okay, ideas? Let's take a few options. Okay, Apple Pay, because the Apple customers can able to more uh, compatibility is there. For example, mm -hmm. Google Android, they have Google Pay is there. So uh, no single party can take the whole market, correct? So it also depends on which vendor they are uh, linked with uh, on the mobile network. So uh, there yeah. are a few factors which you decide, yeah. Yep, yeah. and I'm sure the Apple Pay, I don't even actually know that there was something called Apple Pay. Thanks for bringing to my awareness today. I learned something new. And I'm sure Apple Pay would be internally partnering with few other um, you know, players in the same domain because you cannot be good in the entire end-to-end -end chain of the digital payments. Maybe some of you are good in the encryption, some of you are good in... Uh, uh, the transaction management in a high complex network. Some of you are good in, you know, uh, developing good user experience when you're doing a digital payment. There are good players. Uh, there are players with uh, some strengths. And instead of competing, why not join hands and develop something called blue ocean strategy? That's the business strategy I'm talking about. New operating model, new business model. These are all technological savviness and technical agility for business professionals. While a lot of emerging technology and awareness is more about technical agility and technological savvy for engineers, it is equally applicable for other roles. And developing both of them is developing technological savvy together. Okay, you see what I'm making a point here? So now let's talk about developing technical agility. So I'm just watching my time here. I have about six minutes. I think we should be able to run uh, pretty well. Um, I might not have time for a second poll ahead. That's fine. So to develop awareness, cap cap capacity, and ability to discover and deliver value, I think we spoke about this. Now, discover what is my feature, is my solution, is my, you know, whatever service, is it valuable? Is it feasible, usable, sustainable? All these are typical product discovery uh, questions. Mm -hmm. Similarly, can I deliver things faster with high quality, reliability, how fast and is automatable? Is something maintainable, available, high availability? All of these are answers which are from the delivery side. And we need to develop technical agility to address each of these things. We need a lot of technological awareness, technological savvy, plus the ability to apply the right tools and technologies at the right time. So what's the role of managers in developing this? Managers have a crucial role and, and a huge role. And this is an answer for those people who probably even till date, some of them still get insecure when, when agile adoption happens. What do managers have? Right? They don't have any work or what? Right? Many people get into their insecurity. It's definitely reduced in the last 10 years, for sure. Uh, but, you know, um, it's a crucial one. So let me just highlight that. So developing uh, technical agility at multiple levels. Managers have a role at individuals, at teams, and organization level. And there is a different focus at each level. At individuals level, you are ensuring that every engineer, every, every professional who does their work is, is doing that with quality and with automation. No automation, you're no relevant. Okay, that's given. 
So how can you enable them to do that with high quality and high automation? At teams level, how do you establish fast feedback loops so that whatever a team is doing can learn from what they're doing very fast. If a mistake happens, they should learn the moment it happens. That's called mistake proof process so that they can take some corrective action. At an organization level, how can an organization respond with let's say a rapid prototyping for an MEP, right? That needs technology, that needs good wireframing tools, that good needs some simulation tools, right? Some technological awareness so that uh, we can really go back and, you know, and not only that, are you in the business model? What, what new business model we want to try and, and so on. So development starts with self, like any other development, development of technical agility starts with self. That means the manager, he or she has to start learning uh, and it needs a learning mindset for that manager, the coaching ability to develop this in others and you need this focus. Depending on where you're focusing, you need to appropriately focus on this. And that's the role of managers in developing technical agility. So we had a second poll. We will probably skip that. And if time permits, if you guys still hang out, I will do that. Um, but let's wind this up with some myths and enablers. Okay. Um, actually, it's a good thing to run the poll. So let me go back to the previous uh, slides. Again, go back to same menti.com and the same code. Let me bring that question here. And... Um, Yes, all you have to do is either drag it left or right. And the question here is, which of these statements according to you is a myth about technical agility? Which of this is an enabler? If it's an enabler, drag it to the right, one. If it is myth, drag it to left, finish all of them, and then submit. Let's see how, how you guys think. Are you able to answer it? One of you can speak if you're, yes, now I'm seeing. Yes, done. Yes, yes. So I'll give another uh, 15 seconds. So as of now, there are three myths and four enablers. Okay, let's see if it changes. So being technical means ability to code and understand architecture. Yes, that's a myth for sure. And then the same thing means technical agility does not mean only at engineers. You already know about it. Same way, being technically means being technical in your profession. If you are a product owner, you need to be technical. If you are an HR person, you need to be technical. If you are a scrum master, you need to be technical. Mm -hmm. Similarly, an engineer. Mm -hmm. Second thing is managers should focus more on people and less on technical. That's a myth again. You guys got it, right? Because you will not be relevant anymore if you go with this approach. This was working maybe 20 years back. Technical agility is mostly for teams and not for managers and leaders. Again, a myth. I think you guys got it. You nailed it. Okay. Thank you for this. Um, so that's exactly what I was going to show. Uh, the myths. Managers should only focus on people and not on technical. Being technical means ability to code. It's the same thing, right? It's three here and four. That's what I wanted to end. As you already answered, I can pat my shoulder that I did a good job of connecting with you more than me. You guys did a good job of contributing and participating. And that's it. I think we covered a lot of Q&A, but I will still hang out for some more time. And this is the overall summary charts um, that I've created sometime back. And I just broken them into do an unconventional presentation here. Thank you.